Coming up on this week's episode of the Ask Women podcast, we have a master communicator on the show. She teaches you and Kristen and I how to communicate your personal brand to women. She also teaches us about how to communicate with women how to talk to them, how to express who you are as a man, your wants, your likes, your dislikes, all of it. Communication, as you've heard, is the number one most important thing in a relationship and in your dating life. And so listen to this episode. I promise you will gain a lot of helpful information. So keep listening. Welcome to the Ask Women podcast, your favorite podcast with your favorite host, Kristen Carney, and your other favorite host, Marnie Kinris, and with your favorite guest, Jeanette Burke. Jeanette is a media personality, mentor, trainer. She's the host of Jeanette's TV and podcast. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So Jeanette, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, ladies, for having me today. It's a pleasure to be here. You're a professional communicator. That's how I'm going to label you because you help others learn how to communicate through their body language, through their voice tonality, through their words, through every kind of way, exactly who they are and what they can offer up to people. Is that correct? Am I explaining that correctly? Yes, that is correct. And it's also correct that I help them with the written aspect of their marketing message for going forth, for interviewing on odd webcast traditional TV. So I extrapolate the key points of the message so that they can talk and talking points or as we like to call it in our industry, sound bite. And little digestible pieces of their marketing message that resonate with the audience. I love that. So hopefully the guys can hear the symmetry that is going on because I know that what you do is you work with CEOs and celebrities, people like that. But a lot of what you teach can be used on normal people, right? And especially for men who want to improve the way that they're making a first impression, second impression, 10th impression with women that they're interacting with, both in written form, verbal form, visual form, emotional form, all of it. Mm -hmm. So I would love to hear a little bit more about your background first so that the guys who are listening can understand that they are learning from a professional just to understand where you learned this knowledge from and how you came to be an expert in helping people communicate their personal brand. Okay, well, you really hit it on the head, the personal brand. So I started out with a journalism and PR background. I actually studied at the University of Western Ontario in uh, London, Ontario, Canada, which morning you might know about. I went to Western. So yes, I do know. Okay. So I I I actually studied political science and economics and I was going into law school. And then I discovered that I had this knack for all things sort of PR and journalism. And I changed courses and I wound up not going into law school in the States and coming back to Canada and going to Humber College, which you also might know about, Yes, for the PR course. So I started as a publicist. I went from behind the cameras to in front of the cameras. And I did that by becoming known as a PR expert in the Toronto and greater Toronto area. And I did these speaking tours at the Learning Annex and various organizations across the greater Toronto area. That led me to TV placements, which I went as a guest. And then I finished one day and I was offered to be a regular segment on a show. And then I got bumped up to co-host. And I did that for like about 12 years. And then I started doing my own shows. And that's basically how it started. So I started with Jeanette's I'm Every Woman TV. So we're kind of in sync here on women and listening to women and appreciate women. And I rebranded it to Jeanette's TV and Jeanette's TV podcast in the last year and a half because I'm now in season 10 with my show. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I was a rebel. I was the first one in Canada to do online streaming of my show. Like That's how I started. I I was always online. And I built it up to over 5 million viewers worldwide, women and what... I call smart men, ages 30 to 55. 
That's amazing. So what are they listening for? What are they coming to the show for? We cover a variety of lifestyle issues. We feature celebrities, CEOs, business entrepreneurs, professionals. We even have book authors and experts on like all different types of lifestyle issues with designated segments for those type of issues. Amazing. That sounds fantastic. So just to to spin this a little bit. So we're speaking to an audience of men. I actually have a similar background to you. I started off in PR. And when I started my company where I now help men understand women and teach them how to attract, date, seduce, and get the girls that they want, I really believed that I was learning to do PR for men. I was transferring over my PR skills that I was using for companies and brands. And I transferred it over to the men that I was working with so that they could better present themselves and figure out their own personal brand, which would always try to be in line with the brand that I think is best for them to present to women. But we have very similar backgrounds. It's amazing that you can take those skills and transfer them over. I don't do that necessarily because I'm not in the dating world, but... No, but you're doing it perfectly. I take those skills and I teach... I train as a mentor and media mentor and person. So I'll train, I'll provide media training with the same sort of skill sets that we both have developed, only training entrepreneurs and professionals and what have you to use those skills for any kind of camera, my camera, any camera, any podcast, any website, or state, or even if you're doing your own video. So yeah, we definitely have that in common. So what were you going to ask me? I was going to ask you. So what can you tell the guys who are listening about how to package and present their best selves to women? Like, what is the starting point for them to figure out just who they are? I know that you said to me before that you can talk about understanding your body gestures and communicating Mm -hmm. with women. So what are some like top level tips that you would give to guys on presenting themselves in the best way possible to women? Okay. So the first thing is, and it really kind of goes back to the core essence of who you are. And I think If we want to liken it to understanding your brand and your top level, what you bring to the table, you have to understand that first, even as an individual. Who are you? What are you about? What are you really looking for in your life? What are your goals, right? Because if you can't, I guess, clearly articulate and communicate that to another person, you're already starting off disconnected. And I really think that that's very key, mastering that first and foremost. And then carrying it forth in the way you present yourself. So it's all about presentation and performance, right? So how are you presenting yourself to them? And so when you're going out on dates, or even if let's take it up a notch to you're in a relationship or a marriage, how are you communicating with the other person? Are you listening to them? Because listening is the most effective communication skill, right? Well, let's actually take it down two notches to go to even before being in a relationship and maybe even before dating. Because most of the people who are listening to our podcast are single men. So they're more concerned with first impression, either online or in person. So like I was saying, you've got to be able to showcase yourself authentically and speak up and present yourself for who and what you are. Then I think you need to be able to ask pinpointed questions and actually listen to the response. So don't listen with an answer in your head that you're ready to jump back on, but actually listen to what's being said and then come in and give the answer. And then we would need to back up those words with the nonverbal communication, which is the tone and the voice techniques. And the body language. But of course, this is real life. It's not a stage. So we're not going to be using as much vocal variety as we would, let's say, if we were doing truly a performance. I think it's more in the nonverbal cues. So when you're listening to somebody give an answer, are you letting them fully speak? Or are you cutting them off and trying to jump in too much? But, oh, yeah, I have that too. Or I like that too, right? Because that can become annoying and frustrating. The second thing I would say is, are you using your body language in a way that connotes interest in what the other person is saying? So for example, okay, now this might be a little premature. We don't want to get creepy if we're just like meeting somebody for the first time. But one thing for sure in good communication is leaning in 
which indicates an interest in what the other person is saying. So, of course, you don't know somebody that well. You can't lean in that much because that might be perceived as somewhat creepy initially. So just but lean in a little bit because that's important. Eye contact is also important because that also holds interest and shows right on your face how you're connecting with the other person. And they see your eyes, you see their eyes. The eyes are the windows to the soul. So you can see right away if you're connecting. The eyes say it all. You can say, see in a person's eyes if they're bored or disinterested. If you look off when somebody's like off to the left or the right, when somebody's speaking, that's already showing a break in communication and a lack of interest. So you really need to be cognizant of that eye contact. If you're interested in somebody, the eyes are going to show it all. Okay. What about some body language things? So let's say this guy is dressing the part of, I'm a confident guy who's got his shit together. How does he show that in his body language and in his voice tonality? What's the brand there? Yeah, let's start with the body language first, right? Okay. It shows up from the minute you show up. So if you're dressed nicely and you're feeling confident, present yourself that way. Stand up straight, put a good effort forth, use a handshake. You're meeting somebody. A firm handshake says a lot about who you are, right? If you have a limp handshake right away, it connotes the feeling that perhaps you're hiding something or there's something to a lack of trust or something like that. So you want to put your best foot forward always. And there's just very small, simple things that exude confidence and make people feel that they can at least talk to you and get to know a little bit more about you or that you're going to be somewhat trustworthy. As for the tonality, you were asking about the tone of voice. I think it's important to communicate with somebody in your regular speaking voice and to try to stay as true to that as possible because, again, it's not a performance, right? So you want somebody to know you and this is how you're going to continuously communicate with them. So. You might want to raise your voice a little bit, like enunciating like a question or something like that, like an inflection at the end, but not to the performance level that you would do if you were on a stage or in an interview. This is not about interviewing. It's about getting to know somebody and presenting yourself as equal. And so I think the tonality should be pretty natural and authentic at all times. And you wouldn't want to be raising your voice too much because that might give the impression that you're either hard to get along with, difficult, argumentative, maybe not the type of person that you can communicate with. I would say, if anything, use your natural voice and then where appropriate, maybe laugh, break off into a joke or a conversation, ease the tension, bring in like a natural laugh, not a forced laugh. Well, actually, maybe you can give some tips on like different types of voices or different levels that can say different things. Like, for example, you just said, if you're talking too loudly, then that can signal to a woman that you're aggressive. That's really good information as well. Like what are like no-nos for you to notice about yourself? So you gave a couple of interrupting a person and speaking over her words and just going like, oh, I'm so excited. I want to say me too. But the signal that gives to that woman is that you're like too eager, an interrupter, kind of rude. I'd love to hear some more things like that about like what your behaviors can show to people. And it can even just be talking about the way that you advise CEOs to talk. Just a few of the things that you've noticed are like definite no-nos. Okay. So talking too much about yourself going on and on and on is a definite no-no and a definite turnoff. So you want to be able to say enough about yourself, but not everything there is to know about yourself. Save something for the next date. So I would say before you go out and meet somebody new, it's sort of like how I extrapolate a marketing message and break it into talking points or sound bites. Just sort of made me anticipate the general questions one's going to ask you because they're just trying to get to know you. So like have an answer ready for what do you do? right? Be succinct about it. But talk a little bit about your profession, what you do, maybe what got you into it, what excites you about it, what you love about it, maybe even a few things about what you don't like about it, okay? Because we're all human, right? 
Right. So that's pretty general. Well, it's not general. So for a lot of people, it's not general. So let's dive into that a little bit more. Okay, wait, can I finish saying what I was saying before? Because you're taking me off track a little bit. And you were asking me before about how to say it, like not to come off as like too aggressive. Just answer the question in your normal voice. Like, listen to the way I'm talking right now. If you ask me, Jeanette, what do you do? I'm going to say, well, I'm a media personality mentor and trainer. You hear that tone? It's a pretty natural off the cuff tone. So you want to be cognizant of like not going on and on and on, not raising your voice too loud, not trying to impress with a lot of like, oh, let's say, for example, like I only deal with high level clients or I make $150,000 a year. Like those are details that may or may not be important, but certainly not on the first meeting. And those are what I call pushy, aggressive details that are trying to impress somebody rather than letting your true self show. Interesting. And I love that because it's not about bragging. It's about expressing who you are. I want to take a quick break and then we're going to come back. And I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into the statement that you made about, I know this sounds a little bit more too general, but I actually want to dive more into the sharing about feelings. So we will be back right after this. So Tom Brady did it again. He won another Super Bowl and I hope you bet on it. And I hope you made money off the goat. And if you didn't, that's okay. There are still ways to bet online because the NBA and college basketball and the NHL are in full swing. And bet online even covers award shows, TV shows, reality TV. And all you do is head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online has you covered for all the news, scores, and odds. It's the best way to place your bets and it's free to sign up. And if it's free to sign up, why not? We're still going through a pandemic and you're probably home, bored, going insane, not feeling stimulated enough. Well, this is a way to get you having some fun. So don't sit on the sidelines anymore. Get in on the action. Don't forget to use that promo code CLNS50 to receive a 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. As someone who has struggled with depression and been in search for a therapist for many years and found some good ones, found some bad ones, but always struggling during the process, BetterHelp is here to save the day. If you need someone to talk to, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And you can start communicating in under 48 hours. No emailing back and forth, no calling, no getting assistance. Right there when you need it. You get timely and thoughtful responses, all without ever having to sit in that uncomfortable waiting room. And this service is available for clients worldwide. So it doesn't matter where you are. This is available for you. I want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash askwomen. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L- p.com slash ask women. If you listen to the ask women podcast, then you are already miles and miles and miles ahead of other men when it comes to attracting and getting the girls you want. But I must confess, there's one missing piece in the puzzle and that's flirting or the ability to ignite sexual chemistry with any girl you meet in a matter of minutes. Most guys suck at flirting. They can't flirt their way out of a paper bag. But as your personal wing girl, I can't let you be one of those guys. That's why I want to show you the most effective step-by-step formulaic approach to flirting with any girl you like. This formulaic approach has been tested on thousands of girls and has been proven to work like magic. Yes, magic. You just apply the formula and see results instantly and it's that powerful. To find out everything about this flirting formula, all you have to do is go to winggirlmethod.com slash flirty. I've made a special video for you where I reveal what this formula is all about. Go to winggirlmethod slash flirty and you'll find out all about it. All right, we are back with Jeanette Burke and I wanted to dive into what Jeanette touched on, which was a way of expressing who you are and you gave a couple of cues that guys can use. So I know that you said like sharing about how you feel or like a passion. You spoke as if that was like very normal for people to do. Some people don't know to do that. I'm actually working with this client right now and 
he's really fixated on understanding the approach and just he's like, okay, how would this question work on you? How would this question work on you? And I'll say things back to him. It could work. It's great for getting my attention, but it's all in the follow-up afterwards. And he's just like, okay. And I give direction about how to share more and to dive into that topic from his point of view. And his mind was blown. He's like, oh, so I'm supposed to share information with women? And that was something he hadn't thought of before. He just thought the magic was in the questions that he asked in the very beginning. So what you were touching on before the break was the importance of expressing who you are through the way that you talk about the things in your life. So if you can elaborate a little bit on that, because you had said something about like expressing how you feel about it. I forget exactly what you said, but I'd love to hear more about that. What I said is when you talk about certain things like your profession, talk about what ignites why you got into it. And then maybe talk about the things you enjoy most about your job. And maybe one or two things that you don't enjoy as much. You could repeat that same formula talking about a hobby, for example, or things you enjoy doing on the weekend. Then a basic question might be, so tell me a little bit about your family, right? These are common sort of questions we ask when we try to get to know people. So again, I would talk about your family. What makes your family unique? What excites you about being around your family? The holidays are coming. I know it's COVID now. We're not supposed to be doing as much traveling. Maybe talk about how you feel about that, like not spending time with your family over the holidays or how different an experience it is for you this year that you won't be going over to Christmas dinner or having Hanukkah or possibly how you're going to uh, do it from a virtual perspective. Many holidays now are celebrated with extended family through a virtual platform like Zoom. So these are interesting topics to talk about. And different segues as well, like exactly what you were just saying, different ways to expand the conversation. I think that these are wonderful things that you're saying. Is there any guidance that you can give to the guys that are listening about how to not just sort of take a question and answer it and only be in your world. How do you then bring it back to her so that it's a two-way conversation? I'm glad you raised that point because one of the things I see in communication between people is that it can come off that you're being extremely one-sided. And so what I say is give your answer, don't go on and on, and then turn it back on the other person by saying, and how are you feeling about this? Or what's it like for you to experience a different type of holiday this year or not being able to plan a trip to Florida or the Caribbean or whatever? How are you dealing with it? Because then you're showing respect as well as interest and asking them to share their perspective and their emotions and their feelings back. And in doing so, it now becomes a two-way street for communication where You're allowing somebody like getting a piece of you, understanding who you are. So they're able to basically get a good sense or develop a feeling about you. But in asking them back, you're giving them the same opportunity to give that back to you. So that's like balanced communication as opposed to, oh, it's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. Right. Which I think happens between the sexes and between similar sexes as well. That's the human thing. That can be, right? Where we don't feel like we're being heard. We feel like we're listening to somebody give a soliloquy about themselves, but we don't feel like we're being heard. So when you couple that, and what about you type of communication back with some of the tonality, the body language, the leaning in, the eyes, when you put pair that all together, that's when you have much more effective communication. I love that. And I think the thing that you highlighted most for a lot of guys who are listening is that it's not really just about responding to what a woman's asking you. That's very surface level and very easy for anybody to do. But the nuance and the context behind just that simple response that you can give is really what we're all after when we ask questions. That's what we're looking for so that we have something to connect to. But just for women to latch on to something, there has to be more behind just the straight answer. Because a lot of guys are like, yeah, I answered all her questions, which is great, but there's a level deeper. 
to that. And I think that you gave great guidance for the guys who are listening to this show on how to go deeper, questions to ask themselves, and then to say out loud to the women that they're talking to. So I love that. So sorry for interrupting you, but when you were saying it, the first thing that popped in my head is, yes, the deeper connection, right? Not the surface connection, the deeper connection, where there's more emotion and maybe some thought and some feeling behind it. And I think personally, again, I'm not a relationship expert, but just in my own personal experiences, I feel sometimes men more than women have trouble expressing their emotion and their feeling. Maybe because they are coming from a background or a culture which taught them to suppress it, that it was more of a feminine thing to do. But I think it's great if they can tap into it. And I also think that men come from a, sometimes a perspective where they have to be the problem solver because they're not used to engaging in dialogue or conversation in the same way that women are with other women, be it family members or friends. And that's typically why women need a circle of women around them to be able to talk and express and delve in when they can't get that from their male counterparts. They can't get that in their male communication because men don't always want to go into those type of conversations. They want them to be quick over with and they want to be the problem solver. But here's what happens. We don't always want a problem solver. We actually want somebody to listen to us. Right. And so, this is to me a big problem in lack of communication is moving too quickly to fix, to be the solution provider. It's not always about providing a solution, it's more about being heard and being acknowledged, which are very important things, and being understood. And so, when I prepared for this interview today, it's actually going in a very different direction than what I had prepared for. But one of the things that I had a prepared answer to was basically about how men should treat ambitious women. So in our society, let's say North American society, there's been mixed reviews on what an ambitious woman should or should not be. And sometimes the word ambition is given high honors to a man. But when you attach that same word to a woman, not always does it come with a great connotation or the same high honors. And in fact, this was written about not so long ago in Obama administration, wrote a whole thing about ambitious women climbing up. But today, we live in a world where women are free to pursue anything and can have any dream or job or whatever aspiration they want, really. I mean, look now in the US, you've got a female vice president coming in, right? So the thing is, well, I think when it comes to communication and men and women, One thing for a strong, ambitious man to maybe realize is that the strong, ambitious woman is not the foe. She's actually the friend because we are looking for people who are are most like us are the ones that we are actually going to form the best kind of relationships and have the best kind of communications with. And I think that they need to sort of wrap their head around it and start looking at the responses in the communication as a friend, not a foe, and that they're not challenging. Because strong women can have strong responses, but if you can go beneath that hard shell and underneath you may discover that there's a little girl, soft little girl inside there, or uh, some feminine qualities that want to come out and want to get hurt and want to be appreciated and respected. At the same time, There's this whole notion that I'd like a supportive partner, right? Somebody who gets what I'm going through and can listen and be responsive. And so I think maybe being able to articulate similar challenges that one, like whether male or female that we're facing in the workplace and how we handle it, that can be a point that draws you closer rather than apart. For sure. And I love what you just said, because I think that that happens in dating too. For a lot of women who are very passionate and who are super ambitious in life, they do seem to be challenged when it comes to dating. Because I've talked to a lot of women who are nervous about going back out there and either saying what they do, saying who they are, or coming off as super assertive, which is something that they're working on. So I'm going to put this question back to you and to Kristen. But it's how can a man notice this about a woman. I'm sure he can notice it from her profile or 
some of her communication, but like, how can he potentially soften her up with his own words? Because again, I love what you were saying about understanding that women who are ambitious, the truth is they might have a small chip on their shoulder because it ambition is not as welcomed for women. Sometimes it's pushed down or at least the perception from a female point of view is that it's pushed down or not appreciated as equally as men. So how do men help women realize they can like chill out a bit and not have to be so, uh, but also still pull out that feminine side without insulting her. And I'm going to go to Kristen first because she's so silent over there. I want to hear what you have to say because I know that you're going to have like a bantery, jokey version of this, but you're an ambitious woman even though you may not think you are, how could a man kind of tell you to chill out on a date in a kind way that wouldn't be like, you're an asshole. I'm not talking to you ever again. You mean chill out as in don't be so high strung about having to maybe get the check or find the table or take the lead on things? Well, that or I'm a woman, I'm a ball buster, I'm aggressive. Other men don't understand that about me. You're probably not going to... Even if it's subconscious for them... Other men have sort of shamed me for this. Or if they're not even aware of it, that like even for me, I I find that even with my husband, I get into this zone of my work world and I talk to him the same way. And when he's able to speak to me in a certain way that can get me back into like my feminine, relaxed place, I really value him more because of that. Whereas there are other times where I do come to him in that state and he just like shuns me away because he can't handle that energy in that moment where I just feel totally shamed. Am I making sense when I say? Yeah, you're totally making sense. Yeah, the answer I think is a little tricky. So I don't completely know what to say, but my first instinct is to say, keep the energy as the man that you already have. Stay consistent. Don't be affected by her energy. So in a way, you have to have like a little shield around you. And then I think something like prolonged eye contact to kind of say like, I'm on you. I know what you're doing. And letting her kind of pick up the vibe change and then go in with a little bit of a ball busty thing of like, where'd you find my testosterone? I thought I hid it from you. I mean, and this is for me because I'm a comic and this is what I like. I would recommend that for all guys, especially if she's got a beard. But if you can go a little bit more ball busty, do it. Take that risk. It shows that you're not afraid and that you're bold. But I would start with the first steps. And then maybe Jeanette has something more profound or something a little bit more uh, delicate. More eyebrow. That he can say. No, I love that because there's two different routes. There is like the jokey ball busting saying like, you can calm down. And then I hope that Jeanette can provide some other kind of warm and cute version of that. Yeah, I have a different perspective. I think when you're coming together with your other half, what we're talking about men and women here, but it, it could be two women or two men, one who is stronger in more masculine energy than the other. But I think the thing is like, we need to be able to separate, no matter who we are, we have to be able to separate our work life and our personal life. And although we all want partners who can understand what we're going through in a work perspective, and this works both ways, right? For both partners, we also need that time where we're not just always talking about work. So here's what I have an idea for an approach. So let's say you are a strong man dating a strong, ambitious woman. Let's say she had a bad day or something. She comes in to meet you and she seems like a little bit edgy to put it mildly, I guess, edgy. So you might sense that. You might see like she seems a little off or whatever. She, maybe something's going on. So I think maybe just like greeting her and offering her some wine and chillaxing the mood a little bit and maybe presenting her with some food or something to calm her down a little bit. You might see right away a change in her mood. And you might also see that from her facial expressions that she's still somewhat bothered by whatever happened in the day. And then I would just say, you seem a little wound up. Do you want to tell me what's going on, what happened today? And just bring it down like to a soft tone so she feels comfortable expressing herself, right? Then try that leaning in. And if you're already in a relationship, try holding her hand because that will make her feel more comfortable and more like 
you're on my page or you're in my court type of thing and get her to open up a little bit. And then once it's released, you can carry on having a fun or romantic evening. So that elephant in the room isn't going to get in the way. I think the key here is wine. That's the route you want to take. Just dump wine on her. Yes. <laughs> a bucket. Just liquor her up and she'll be mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. That was perfectly said. That's exactly like when I envision myself in that state. That's what I'm looking for. Whether it's on a first date or a 10th date or 10 years into a marriage, you just want somebody who's like, I'm in it. I get it. I see you. Let's just calm down. We'll move forward once you're settled. But you don't want to say calm down or right? from the minute they walk in the door, I notice right away that oh, what's up with you kind of thing, right? Because that's antagonizing and that's just actually adding fuel to the fire. You want to time it a little bit. Like, don't attack. Wait till there's a moment to raise. Like, calm down first, diffuse, and then wait till there's a moment to raise. Like, I sort of noticed when you came in, you seemed a little off. Is something going on? Do you want to tell me about it? You know, I'd love to listen. I think that it's all about making you feel comfortable and supported. And I think what men have to understand is even if you are an ambitious woman, it doesn't mean that you don't want support or love or understanding or someone to talk to or that you're going to be that strong woman all the time. Because sometimes even strong women break and strong is a great release, right? It doesn't mean you're not strong. It means you've reached a tipping point. So I think to avoid the assumption that she doesn't want you to take care of her. Because I think on some level, even the strongest, most successful, most ambitious woman still wants that from their partner. They do want to be fucked after a little bit. And they definitely want to be heard and understood and appreciated and valued. Maybe even encouraged to bring out the softer side if they're not encouraged, like in another space, perhaps at work. Maybe they feel they can't bring out their softer feminine side. They would want to have an opportunity to do more of that at home. Women don't always want to live in the the highest energy because our bodies aren't built for that kind of stress. We actually need to calm down. So those are the things that I would say make a difference. I think those are all awesome. And then speaking in the way of more first date energy or first date stuff, I think if a guy is pretty insistent on maybe taking the lead she can eventually relax a little bit if she's used to always being in control. So if you get around one of those women on the date, be really insistent. Don't be a dick, but be insistent that you want to get the door and that you want to pick the restaurant and that you're going to take care of it. You're in charge, you know? Not in a way that like, I'm in charge, I'm a man, but that you're going to take care of it. You're going to, don't worry, you got it. It's something that you're going to handle so her guard can eventually just kind of go, whew, and especially after... I love that. Everything you just said is like all that I want to feel all the time. So I love the way that both of you explained it. And I hope the guys who are listening can understand that. Jeanette, we're going to wrap up the show now. But I want to tell people how to get in touch with you, listen to your podcast. How do they do it? Okay, so to get in touch with me, I am in Toronto area in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So you can find me three ways by email, Jeanette, J-A-N-E-T-T-E at Jeanette, J-A-N-E-T-T-E, Burke, B-U-R-K-E dot com. You can reach me out on me on any of the social media platforms. I'm everywhere. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever. Message me. That's great. You can call or text me at 416-802-0655. You can go to my website and schedule a call with me for 30 minutes. Complimentary. Right in the booking calendar. And to watch the show, so the show is again Jeanette's TV, and then there's Jeanette's TV podcast to watch or listen. Watch us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, Google. We're there. We're also on YouTube. So we have a YouTube channel. And you can access all of it, including finding me on Spotify, BuzzFeed, Apple. Like we are on every single platform you can think of. And all you have to do is go to www.jeanetteburke.com. Go to the Jeanette's TV section. It's all there. It's listed. All the shows, all the YouTube channels, and all the podcast channels. And you can just hop on over there. Awesome, guys. I think you should definitely do that. 
New episodes of the Ask Win podcast come out every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Please go and subscribe to our show and make sure to share our show with other people. Give the gift of giving from Ask Women. You guys are awesome. We'll see you next week. 